Throughout the 1800s, the mentally ill population was alienated from the rest of society. This segregation was cruelly displayed in many institutions for the mentally ill. They were placed into asylums on separate islands miles away from society, for example, Blackwell's Island in New York. But these institutions were an improvement. Dorothea Dix, a school teacher, visited a jail in 1841 and realized that many innocent people with a mental illness were being put into jail cells with criminals. The poor conditions of the jail, along with abuse from other inmates, further degraded the condition of many mentally ill people's symptoms. For the rest of her life, Dorothea Dix wrote and advocated for the construction of mental institutions. She directly helped build 30 institutions for the mentally ill. Only a few months after her death, in July 1887, Elizabeth Cochran, commonly referred to by her pen name Nellie Bly, continued to advocate for the mentally ill. Nellie Bly risked her life and sanity to take a stand against the poor treatment of the mentally ill people by exposing the brutal reality of Blackwell's Island Insane Asylum. Bly was assigned by the New York World to get herself admitted into a sane asylum and write an article about the treatment of patients. She arrived as Nellie Brown at the Temporary Home for Females in New York on September 18, 1887. Her goal was to be considered insane and be admitted into Blackwell's Island Insane Asylum. She began saying random things throughout the night, maintaining her persona as an insane woman. The next morning, the police was called to take Bly. She was brought before the police chief and judge. Bly refused to talk, and the judge sent her to Bellevue Hospital. The first doctor Bly saw at Bellevue asked her about where she came from, to which she denied any memory of. The second doctor asked her if she saw faces on the wall, heard voices, and what the voices said. She told the doctors that she does not hear voices, but she doesn't listen to them. The third and final doctor asked her to stretch her arms and move her fingers. These were standard procedures in testing the sanity of patients. Nellie Bly said, I found no correlation between these tests and a person's sanity and could determine a perfectly normal person to be insane. From the moment I entered the insane ward on the island, I made no attempt to keep up the assumed role of insanity. The rooms had barred windows that stood five feet above the ground. One doctor told her that there were more than 300 women in the building Bly was in, and nearly 1,600 total in the institution. The same doctor said to Bly, Every door is locked separately and the windows are heavily barred so that escape is impossible. Should the building burn, the jailers or nurses would never think of releasing their crazy patients. Not a dozen women could escape. All would be left to roast to death. The food barely qualified. Throughout the day, they were given a cup of unsalted beef tea, a bit of cold meat and a potato, a cup of oatmeal gruel, and a cup of tea and a slice of unbuttered bread. At dinner, the woman would fight over the food, stealing other people's only food. After having her bread stolen, another patient offered Nellie's hers but it was so horrible she couldn't swallow it. The other patient told her that she must eat or she will go crazy. At one of the dinners, she found a spider living in her bread. When Bly asked a nurse for something of substance, the nurse snapped. You are in a public institution now and you can't expect to get anything. This is charity and you should be thankful for what you get. There was a motto written on the wall in the pavilion that read, while I live, I hope. Bly thought this was ridiculous and said, I would have liked to put above the gates that open to the asylum, he who enters here leaveth hope behind. A tub was filled with ice cold water and all of the women were stripped and bathed in the same water with the same soap with the same washcloth. One patient recalled, Suddenly I got one after the other three buckets of water over my head, ice cold water too, into my eyes, my ears, my nose, and my mouth. I think I experienced some of the sensations of a drowning person as they dragged me gasping, shivering, and quaking from the tub. The hair of 45 women was combed with six combs by two nurses and one patient. Still soaking wet, the patients were thrown into plain robes with BIH6, which stood for Blackwell's Island Hall 6. Another patient said, All night long I listened to a woman cry about the cold and beg for God to let her die. Bly also wrote, it is not the attendants who keep the institution so nice for the poor patients, but the patients who do it all themselves, even to cleaning the nurses' bedrooms and caring for their clothing. The nurses' treatment of patient was on the verge of torture. One patient recalled, Then they tied my hands and feet, and throwing a sheet over my head, twisted it tightly around my throat so I could not scream, and thus put me in a bathtub filled with cold water. They held me under until I gave up every hope and became senseless. 
Bly's publication of her experience at Blackwell's Island included many other gruesome descriptions of nurses. In many ways, Bly's description made the nurses seem like villains and possible victims of a one-side reporting. No, I don't think they were victims. I think she probably experienced what she said she experienced. I not any doubt about it. And I can imagine working in a place like that could make you pretty grumpy. You know, if you don't have anything but dirty towels, that's what you have. So, uh, and they certainly weren't in a position to change anything because they were women and they were not in charge. After leaving Blackwell's, Bly went on to write multiple articles and a book exposing the horrors of the asylum. In total, she wrote three articles and books about her experience in the madhouse. Other newspapers wrote another article covering her journey. The articles Behind Asylum Bars and Inside a Madhouse, written by Nellie Bly, were first published in the New York World. Another New York newspaper called the New York Sun published an article on October 14, 1887, claiming that Nellie Bly's articles were exaggerated and mainly false. Nellie Bly quickly published an article targeted at the New York Sun titled The Untruth and Every Lie and swore by her truthful account of the experience at Blackwell's Island. I have always been particular in stating only facts in all my work, but I have never confided myself so closely to this rule as in my story behind the silent bars. The documentation of Nellie Bly's article had a direct impact on the conditions of Blackwell's Island Insane Asylum. After the institution realized they were going to be receiving some outside attention, they dramatically cleaned up the boat that transported the patients, the kitchen, and the rooms the patients stayed in. The truly insane patients were hidden away and many were released. Miss Ann Neville was a patient in the asylum and said, When Miss Brown and I were brought here, the nurses were cruel and the food was too bad to eat. We did not have enough clothing and Miss Brown asked for more all the time. Strange to say, ever since Miss Brown has been taken away, everything is different. The nurses are very kind and we are given plenty to wear. The doctors come to see us often, and the food is greatly improved. Her article also made the New York Grand Jury conduct an investigation at Blackwell's Island. Bly accompanied the Grand Jury during their investigation and realized even with the improved condition, the asylum was still unfit. They said the nurses and doctors needed more training, and overall the asylum needed more funding. Finally, the Grand Jury approved an additional funding for the asylum. Nellie Bly released the book, Ten Days in a Madhouse. From the new government funding, revenue from the book, and donations from other people and organizations, Nellie Bly raised around $1 million, which is around $17 million today. This money went to help improve the conditions of the mentally ill. By nationally publicizing her book, Nellie Bly affected more than just Blackwell's Island and other insane asylums in New York. Bly showed the country and the world the terrible conditions that were supposed to treat mentally ill people. The thousands who read Bly's books and articles were able to see how she personalized the people within Blackwell's Island of St. Asylum. It's a consistent theme of her life that she always was looking for uh, social justice for people or social welfare. These are things that were big values of hers. The public was able to connect with the mentally ill and they saw how easily they and their full sanity could be trapped on Blackwell's Island. This was Nellie Bly's biggest impact. Mentally ill people were not disgraces and nuisances of society that needed to be locked up in a box. They are people, people who need help and treatment. So when they are ready and their doctors declare it so, they can rejoin society as equals.